Frankie, thanks for inviting us into your Manchester gym today. How, we've seen you in action. Can you give us an update on how your training is going ahead, ahead of your next fight, please? Yeah, I, I say this every time, but it really is. It's going better. Every fight, the training's going better and it's going well. I, can't, I couldn't ask for it to be going any better. I've been sparring like middleweights and I'm only like right away and I've been holding my own with them. It's going well. I mean, is there anyone out there that you fear at all or are you confident <coughs> whoever you're up against? I, I, there's no point in mentioning the champions at the moment. I've only had three fights, so mm. I'm nowhere near them at the moment. But mm. give me another f six fights, and then I think I'll be ready for anyone in there. Mm. And have your family been a big help after the Olympics? Because, I mean, if you could just uh, go through how disappointing that was, it must have been intensely frustrating for you what happened in Macau, not making the weight. Yeah, it was hard, but I, I knew six months before I weren't going to do it. Mm. I just, in my mind, but I just kept trying. I really wanted it that bad. I just kept going and going, and then. In the end, it weren't meant to be. No, but your family have, have helped lift your spirits. Because were you were you very down at that point when you had to? Yeah, I was down before it because I just knew it weren't going to come. Mm. I, was, I was making the way above just not easy, and yeah. I make it better now. I'm a pro because I train longer, but I just knew it weren't going to happen. Mm. So you know, they were there for me no matter what I needed. Them. I imagine, and I know you've said before that that experience has given you a few, <coughs> you know, made you disappointed with the uh, ABA. But I mean, has it also? made you hungrier to prove a point to everyone else out there as to what you're capable of? Uh, not really, because I think everyone already knew winning the world, so I'm the only mm. person ever said that yeah. from Britain. And I've never, I've never ever, no one's ever died me in the ring. It's just mm. that dad, I didn't know who's for he was. And I don't, I don't think it was anyone's fault, it's just growing, but it's just all that really matters is just winning really to me. I don't, I don't mind. If I got, everyone has critics. I just, I'll shut them up, hopefully. Do you feel you've shut them up already, or do you feel you've still got to shut them up? I don't shut them up until I'm world champion, will I really? There's always someone there. Mm, yeah. And what, what were the emotions when you, when you had to, when your Olympic dream sort of eventually evaporated? Was it sort of anger or frustration? I mean, you said it had been brewing for a few months, but... Yeah, just uh, frustration, really, that it just, I couldn't do it, and I'd done my best. There's yeah. nothing else I could have done. And you've obviously turned pro since you come back from uh, the Olympics in Macau. How's that all gone? Do you wish with hindsight maybe you'd turn pro a little earlier, given what happened out in Macau? I can't say now I wish I turned pro after the Worlds, but it doesn't matter now. That year I was boxing at the weight above and I got used to it, so now I am the weight above now. Yeah. Like well, so I'm just happy the way everything's going really. I'm undefeated. No one's going to distance from me yet, but that doesn't matter. As long as I keep winning, that's all that matters. Um, Come on. You're a big Birmingham City fan, you're a big Brummy. You've made a few sacrifices moving up to Manchester to, to relocate to this gym. Why, why have you done that? Because uh, to be the best, you've got to make sacrifices, haven't you? Mm. So that's what I've done. And uh, I know it's hard being away from my son and that, but I've just, just knuckling down now and just, I know when I'm, well, hopefully when I'm world champion, then I'll be able to do everything I want with my son. And it'll be better then. You've left your friends and your family back in Birmingham. Are you sort of eat, sleep and drinking boxing up here in uh, Manchester? Yeah, more or less, yeah. That's all you, that's all you can do in Birmingham, but then you get distractions up here. There's no, no distractions. Mm. I just start around the gym and it's going well. And of course, when we're in Manchester, it's an area synonymous with Ricky Hatton, but I, a lot of Brummies hold you in the same esteem that probably Mancunians hold Hatton. So how, how does that feel to be helping put Birmingham on the map as well? It's good, yeah, of course. Uh, I've got a big fan base, mainly from Birmingham City Football Club. Mm. All oh, my family and friends as well are mainly supporters of them, so it's good, yeah. Hopefully I can just give them what we can go to Manchester. But his career, some would say, has, has taken a bit of a downward turn in recent years. Do you hope to maybe replace um, him and take his place in the affections of the, the sporting public? Because everyone loves a sort of working-class boxing hero, and that, that could be you, Frankie, couldn't it? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. That, that'd be, there's a lot of us who want to take that down. Right? But really, I don't, I don't want to say I want to be the next you can, I want to be the next Frankie Gavin, really. And uh, I watch fighting, or watch boxers all the time, so as long as I just keep my head down, I know I can go down. One day, would you like to um, fight at St Andrews? That's the dream, isn't it, really? A world title fight at St Andrews, can I ask for no more?